Hi teachers, today's video is a quick classroom tour. Um, at this point I would like to say something clever like if you're new to this channel please subscribe. But the truth of the matter is I've only had the channel for about a week or a week for two weeks and I would appreciate it if you would all subscribe. Before I give you a classroom tour there are a few things you need to know about me. Uh, my name is Melanie Howell. The, the 2018-19 school year is my 22nd year in the classroom. Uh, I'd been considering making or starting a YouTube channel uh, for a while because I thought, wouldn't it have been cool when I was in college if there had been this thing called YouTube and you could kind of get a glimpse into what real classroom was like before you were a teacher. You know, and I had considered that and thought about, you know, wouldn't it be nice to help other people? But then uh, a teacher who I follow on YouTube, Real Rap with the Reynolds, said something in one of his videos that sort of was the tipping point for me. He said that having a YouTube channel was a great vehicle for self-reflection. And I hadn't considered that. And basically I'm willing to learn and willing to try just about anything to um, try and make me a better teacher. But I will say that even after 22 years, I still love to get up and come to school. It's a complete pleasure to be here. Another thing you need to know about me is because I'm not in my first five years of teaching, I am not in that I have to go out and buy one of everything phase of teaching anymore. When you're young and you don't have a lot of supplies, yes, you, you do that kind of thing. But I'm kind of past that. I do, I mean, I don't think there's a teacher in America that doesn't spend their own money on their classroom. Um, but I'm to a point where basically I invest in my classroom library. And when, I mean, of course I want all the books to be returned, but when they're not returned, um, I just kind of figure, well, Maybe that household needed the book more than I did, and um, I just replace books. I just, I, I spend my money in books. Um, I'm very fortunate that I teach in a school um, that supplies just about everything we need. It's, I have to say, it's pretty great. We'll start the tour with my board. I teach fifth grade and organization is a big part of what we're teaching. So here at the end, I do have a week view right next to the homework section so that they knew, know what's due tomorrow. Um, fifth grade is the first year at my school. We have a history class and so keeping things in chronological order can sometimes be a challenge. So we do have an area where we keep some social studies notes. At the top I sort of keep a list of what we've been doing in grammar just so that the names of the skills stay current in their minds. And then this last section goals for today, that's just as much for me as it is for the kids. Um, just to help me make sure we do <laughs> all the things I want to do, make sure we get things accomplished. Smart board. Uh, here we have some flexible seating. I put this little chair on top to be able to show you. Uh, both the chairs and the table are from Lakeshore Learning and I've only had them, you know, about a month. But so far the kids love it and it's all super durable. This section of the board, just some places where I can keep some anchor charts and different things, uh, computer, Chrome cart, and document camera. Picture of a student whom I just loved and adored. And then we have just an informal list of all the books we've read so far this year. Um, just because I think the kids can forget how much they've accomplished and they they need to see that in a visual. Here a uh, teacher desk with computer. Yes, we still have desktops to work our smart boards. And oh, this poor couch. This well, technically I guess it's a futon, but this was my daughter's when she was a teenager and it has made its way to school for a good, as you can see for a good many years now uh, my rug of the United States states which we actually use quite a bit in our history class um, I have them stand in certain areas that we're talking about 
just show them, you know, the distances and things like that. It's just a good little fun point of reference. A couple of bean bags I inherited from a teacher friend. Now these shelves um, make up my classroom library. Things are divided by genre. The shelves um, are things that came from home. And then the little pencil sharpening station and just a little cubby there with, you know, erasers and extra pencils and rulers and, you know, different things that kids need. Um, here, the last two cubbies are used for glue and scissors. Again, just supplies that kids might need. These are the cubbies that the children use and they have hooks underneath for book bags. Um, again, for social studies purposes, map of the world, um, all of these extra little cubby areas are from Lakeshore Learning, have been super durable and great. Let's see here. Oh, this little table, Santa brought my daughter when she was in first or second grade, and it's been in school for years now. And kids actually like to sit here when they kind of need to be by themselves and get something finished. Maybe they know they have a big dance practice or soccer practice or something and they want to get knock home workout. Again, something from home just to sort of decorate the room. And then this is the teacher area. My shelf here with lots of books about education and kids and let's see binders with different units I've put together over the years. Oh, there's my little toolbox. Uh, you know, teacher supply kit thing that I was so proud that I bought last summer. And then I did give up my teacher desk and truthfully, I haven't missed it because let's face it, I was spending most of my time at the kidney table anyway. So I just officially moved over here and yes, I'm a stacker. It just pretty much stays like this. Yeah, I will make no excuses. Okay, so last little area here, just some mementos from other students, everything from just hand-drawn Christmas cards to, yeah, Napoleon Dynamite cards that go back like to the year, what? <laughs> I don't even know, 2003 or so. That little bean squirrel made out of beans was a gift from a child. When she went to summer camp, she made me a squirrel out of beans. I thought that was great. Oh, I gotta show you this. Yeah, that's right. When my daughter was at the University of Georgia, she cornered Malcolm Mitchell in a Chick-fil-A and got him to write, Dear Mrs. Howell, Merry Christmas from Malcolm Mitchell. And we all know because he does all the uh, importance of reading videos, he is like a superhero to elementary school teachers. If you haven't seen any of those videos, you should check him out. He's pretty awesome. All right, more anchor charts, vocabulary charts. And then the last wall is a personal wall, some art that my kids did when they were little. And this was a gift from a student who is currently a senior in high school. And another map that we use as a point of reference. Oh, out in the hall, we had sort of a race car, ready, set, go, back to fifth grade kind of a deal this year. So yeah, I have race cars on my door too. And then this is sort of the overall view. So classroom tour, um, nothing exceptionally different in here. Classroom setup doesn't have to be super stressful. You just sort of think, you, okay, you cannot anticipate every need. You're gonna set your classroom up and sometime in the first two weeks of school, you're gonna move a couple of things around. And everybody does that and it's fine. It's part of what we do. Teachers, um, you know, one of the number one characteristics, you have to be flexible and be able to roll with it. So, you know, when you discover that the kids just, you know, oh, actually, I have some of these little extra cubby things from Lakeshore, and I put them all on top of the other cubbies thinking, won't that be convenient? Well, some of my kids are tall enough to reach up there, so we had to move some of them. Things like that. You just can't anticipate everything. And I've been doing it for 22 years, so there you go. All right, well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the tour, and I do hope you'll subscribe and click on that little picture of a bell so that you'll get all future videos, too. Have a great day.